What's up guys? Today is a uh, is one of those vlogs that everybody doesn't really like talking about, but I feel is necessary to talk about. So I'm gonna go over, <laughs> I'm just gonna open this up so you guys can see. I'm gonna go over some toilet, some toilet option for van life. Uh, I'm gonna go over what I have. I'm gonna go over some different options. There's not too many options when it comes to van life. We're gonna go over some DIY methods. We're gonna go over some high priced items and we're gonna go over uh, some, again, what I use, which is not high priced. That's kind of mid range. So let's get into all that right now. And uh, <laughs> this one's gonna be fun. <laughs> If you guys are new to my page, consider subscribing. What I do here is I do uh, van life related situations, vlogs, as I'm doing today. Uh, and something I really love to do is tours of other vans, tours of other tiny dwellings. I also do shop tours, anything uh, that is related to either tiny dwelling, van life, something along those lines. I try to be as real as possible. All of my videos are vlog style, so I'm the one holding the camera. Nobody's doing my work for me. Very rarely I will have a friend hold my camera, but other than that, it's usually me behind the camera and it's either holding out. I do not do any fluff. I try to be as real and raw as possible with everybody on how I do things here on this particular page. Uh, you can also check me out on my website, jaratachi.com. I am updating it constantly. I do consulting, mostly for design, uh, small spaces like this. I do not do builds, but I can get you in touch with people that do builds if you want professionally done, or if you want to do a DIY assist build, something like I did here. I try to help out as many people as possible during the process. And I'm also a stand-up comedian. I actually started another page uh, that's going to be predominantly podcast and comedy related. It is who is this effing guy? And I will put the link up there if you want to subscribe to that as well. I will be doing skits and parodies, making fun of actually van life uh, for the most part. And because I can and I live in it and my podcast which will be not pretty much van life related will be more lifestyle and sports and uh, other things that I'm interested in and that's kind of what I do there this is all van life stuff I'm very excited to bring you guys all the vlogs and information that I possibly can like today a lot of this is opinion based um, but I'm trying to give you as many facts as possible I will also go over what I use like I said for a toilet because I've been doing the van life for uh, almost three years now, I have pretty much seen every scenario that you could put toilet wise into a van. In my first van, by the way, uh, everybody that thinks this is blue painter's tape, it is not. It is actually epoxy. Uh, it is an epoxy shelf. If you were to see it in a more three dimensional way instead of just like that, it would look a little different but everybody that's like oh is that blue painter tape behind you no it's not blue painter tape it's a freaking shelf that has uh, epoxy on it just like my table has epoxy on it okay that's out of the way so going back to the toilets i guess let's just start with, with what i have and maybe why and then i'll kind of go into the other options that you that you possibly are interested in in my first van i had uh a cassette style a thetford okay and it was a cassette style toilet, cassette style or porta potty style, whichever way you want to look at it. Technically, the tanks will split apart. Uh, you have your top tank, which is fresh water, uh, that is a flushing mechanism. And then the bottom tank, which is your, your business, your number one and number two, right? You then you detach those two and then you will go into a public space and you can actually dump it out. They do make eco-friendly pods that you can actually put in there to help with any smells or anything of that nature. I personally do use the eco-friendly pods. Uh, again, I still dump it out into a public space or a public toilet. Whenever I'm near them, uh, there's public toilets everywhere or you can even use friends' houses. You literally just take it off, you, you and there's a there's a tube, and you undetach, and then you dump. It's really that easy. That was my first van, and I believe it was the Thetford, I think it was a five gallon. When I was going into my second van, which is what I'm in now, I actually had all intentions of either using a composting style or a DIY composting style. Some things changed and I went back to a cassette style or porta potty style. I didn't want to use a five gallon massive one as before. It was really difficult to kind of carry that into public spaces. It was rather large and it was, it kind of got heavy. I went with a smaller style, which I believe is a two and a half gallon. It's more smaller, it's more compact. It was just easier to use. You have to empty it a little bit earlier than I would the other one, but like, 
you know, there's plenty of places that you can empty a tank into a public toilet. Now, the kicker with all of this is I've been in van life for almost three years now, like I said at the top of the video, and I've actually never, <laughs> this is so weird to talk about, I've never done number two in the van. The reason for that is, is because there's always places to do number two. In an emergency situation, would I do number two in a cassette style toilet? No, I would not. Reason for that is, is the reason your number two does smell is because you actually, when you take that and you put it into liquids, then it will start to smell. What I would do if I had to, I there's biodegradable bags. A lot of people use them to pick up uh, dog poop, I guess. Eco-friendly bags, really. I would get those, uh, not the dog ones, but they do make them in bigger sizes. I would literally wrap it around the toilet seat and I would poop into a bag. This is like the weirdest thing to say into a camera right now, but I can guarantee you most people in the van life community have done this or know exactly what I'm talking about. Again, I haven't done it yet. I'm more than happy to do it if I needed to. There's always public places around. How I did my first toilet, I had it in my, my wet bath or my bathroom, whatever, and it was on a sliding shelf. It was actually really cool. The second way, again, I wanted it stored in that little shower area. I didn't want to remove the toilet every time I had to go pee. As a male, we don't have to sit while we pee. We can stand over the toilet if we uh, can pee properly. I attached it to the back of the door. The hinge on the door is heavy duty enough where it can hold the weight of the toilet. And then I put angle supports underneath a platform that I that I cut out and I put it on there. Now you might be thinking, well, when I'm driving around, how does it not slide off that to that that platform? On my second build, I had a Thetford, but I got rid of it to get a Dometic. The Dometic toilets are number one. They're smaller in size, which is nice, like the, the frame of it. Sa same amount, like two and a half gallon. But you can also buy these clips that are meant to go for the Dometic toilet that I used. Those clips actually hold it in place and I've driven around with it and it has not fallen off. It has not fallen off the platform that I designed and built for it. It works perfectly and when I do use my shower, I open that up, can now keep it open while I shower and it, it's perfect, it's a perfect scenario. I love it, it just works. So that's pretty much everything that I do and how I use it. Again, use it mostly for number one. If I needed to use it as a toilet, I actually, the angle supports would hold, I think up to like five or 600 pounds, but I don't trust the hinge on the door. So I would, if I had to go number two, or if there was a, a girl that needed to pee in my toilet, then I would take it off, which is actually very easy to do. You take it off the clips, you put it on the ground, and then you'd use it that way. That's pretty much it. That's my system. Let's go over some other options because this, ha this is asked a lot by people that aren't in the van life community. Where do you do your business, right? I like to say that the cassette style is the mid-range style. Option that you could do no toilet at all, <laughs> which I think is funny, but my I have friends that do it. They either use bags, they use a DIY method, pretty much built their own compost. Problem that I see using that is the seals on it, uh, sealing the liquid from the solids is kind of difficult to create. You have to make sure you do it right. That's why people use a composting style toilet or a composting toilet. Uh, so if you were to do it yourself, people use a five gallon bucket or a three gallon bucket. They seal it off. They use a urine diverter. Uh, there's a couple companies that make the urine diverters out there and you could do it that way. Technically, you could build your own. There's plenty of ways to do that. It is kind of difficult. And again, you have to make sure you seal it properly. Uh, some people also use air fans to extract the air out of there or to, to, to make sure to enclose that smell or to get rid of the smell inside of that toilet. <laughs> Uh, their DIY toilet. Again, I've seen them done. I didn't want to go down that route. I started looking into it a little bit more and I was like, I'm not making my own toilet. If I have to do number two, I'm going to go into a bag. That was my whole thought behind it. There are some people, again, they just want to do it themselves and that's fine. Uh, so if you want to do it yourself, you can get a five gallon bucket, a urine diverter, because again, you do not want to mix your liquids and your solids. If you want to install a fan, you could get a computer fan to install it that way. 
Uh, those computer fans run off a 12 volt. You can hook it right up to your batteries if you want to do it that way. Some actually don't even use the fan. They just use sawdust or kitty litter and it absorbs the moisture of your solid. Man, this is so weird. I haven't watched too many videos on this, so I don't really know if people talk about it the way that I do, but it is what it is. And then I think there's a method that so many people use and they feel that it's the best and people that do use the composting style swear by it. I'm not the biggest fan of it, and the only reason I'm not the biggest fan of it, I guess there is another way, and I will go into that in a second. The reason I don't like it all that much is because of the price tag. There are pretty much three major companies that handle composting when it comes to uh, marine and uh, van life. Seahead, I'm gonna go from cheapest to most expensive. Seahead toilet, nature's head toilet, an airhead toilet. The sea head, pretty much a DIY version of it. Don't think it's all that well made. I haven't seen one in real life. From what I've seen in the reviews I've read, I'm not the fan of the sea head. I think they're like anywhere between three to 600. I'm not 100% sure on that. But what most van lifers go with is the nature's head. It's between 900 and $1,000. Yes, that is correct. 900 and $1,000 for a freaking toilet that has a built-in urine diverter. It has a composting section of it, and it has a built-in fan that you can you can do, but you have to exhaust the fan to the outdoors. From what I understand, people, you don't have to clean out your compost. Again, I don't have a compost, like I don't know this, but what I hear is you don't have to clean out the composting for something like people go weeks. Uh, you know, they can usually go about two, three, four times in the compost before they have to clean it out. From what I understand, it's, it's a pretty messy job. You have to do it right. Again, I didn't want to go down that path. I didn't want to clean up that. <laughs> same thing with the sea head, same thing with the air head, just like the nature's head. The only reason I've heard that the airhead is better than the nature's head is because of the way that the urine uh, container uh, detaches from the, the apparatus itself. From what I understand, uh, you don't have to remove one section before actually taking out the urine container. The urine container, I believe, is two gallon or two and a half gallon on, I believe, both of them. You may have to look that up. If I was to do it, I would probably go with an airhead. It's a little more expensive. It's about $100 more, maybe $150 more. However, I think the footprint of an airhead is smaller than a nature's head. Everybody uses nature's head, and that's why everybody goes out and gets one. Fine. I think the airhead is a little bit better designed. The seals are probably roughly the same. Uh, again, with the airhead, you do have to take that hose, and you do have to make sure that your air hose goes to the outside because you don't want you don't want that smell the poop smell in your van so you have to make sure that you do that again the other reason i didn't want to go with it, uh, composting is i didn't want to drill another hole in my van to make sure that that hose goes to the outside and it's another wire you have to wire up that fan so it's another component that i just didn't want to deal with again that's just me you guys have your own opinions and thoughts and ideas, so that's fine. I'm just trying to give you as much information as possible. The last way to kind of do all this is what you see in RVs, is a black water tank. The problem with having a black water tank is you need to find a dump station. It is illegal to dump a black water into streets. You just can't do it. You're not allowed to do that. It's, it's, that's, that's literally dropping uh feces into streets for people that don't understand this um if you littering is illegal as well obviously all of that is consu is when it rains goes into your storm drains and then those storm drains go into the oceans and that's why we have pollution everybody so that's why you can't dump uh your gray water or your black water into streets technically now the reason that some people will dump their gray water is because they use eco-friendly products in their sinks or when they wash their dishes, right? That stuff is eco-friendly. Technically, it's not polluting. There's so many eco-friendly products, so absolutely try to use them. Going back to the black water tank, I've seen them used in vans. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not a fan of the black water tank. To each their own. It's a little bit more complicated to put a black water tank in your van. And again, you have to find a dump station. You can find dump stations through, I think it's uh, Santa Dumps. Uh, I'll put the website maybe in the link below. You have to pay for dump stations as well from what I understand. Some dump stations are free. Again, I just didn't want to use a black water tank. Less is more when it comes to building out your van, right? The more complex system, I believe black water tanks are a way more complex system than having a porta potty style 
which is what I have, or a, uh, a composting style. I really hope that you guys got some good information out about this. I've been holding off doing this kind of video because it was it's weird to talk about, but it's a necessary topic for people that are new to the van life community, that are interested in where do you do your business, how do you do your business. I do tours of people, and, uh, and people are always like, where's the toilet, where is this, where is that, how did you do this, how did you do that? So I figured I'd make a vlog about this. Hopefully that helps you guys. And if you have any questions, please comment below. Check out jaritachi.com for any more information. You can also email me at info at jaritachi.com. I'm also on the Reachable app, which I'll put the link in below as well. Uh, that is a, a way to text with me uh, through that app where you can ask me questions and I have packages and whatnot, all that good jazz. So guys, I will see you guys next time. Check out all my tours. Check out all the other vlogs. Later.